All right. Good afternoon again. Um, welcome to POS 431, Modern Political Theory. Um, last week, we were talking about the state of nature and the ultimate conclusion by some of the media philosophers that the way to resolve the state of nature is to have um, order through the state. And so in continuance of those discussions today, we'll be looking at uh, justifications of the state. Why should the state, whether it's the Leviathan or the collective general will or society exist? Um, so that's where we pick up this discussion today. Um, so we looked at a number of uh, philosophers and some of their um, justifications. And so picking up from that train of thought, so Hobbes clearly comes out and states that um, the only justification or the, the only order beyond the natural the natural laws that can bring order is the Leviathan. Um, Rousseau takes a sort of similar approach. In, in other words, he thinks that organized society is a way to maintain order, but he looks at this slightly differently. And so he goes back to thinking about what is society? What kind of society do we build? Who builds society? And so um, this is where he argues that the most natural of all societies is the family. Um, but so, but again, and we had a, quite a bit of discussion on this. The, the question is, is the family a natural phenomenon? Um, do the people, especially where he talks about the children, do they stay connected to the parents because it's their only way to survive? And therefore, if there was a different way of surviving, they might choose perhaps something different. And so um, Rosu actually um, suggests that yes, if um, children could didn't have to depend on the parents, they might maybe choose a different relationship. And this phrase is uh, the children remain attached to the father only so long as they need him for their preservation. And so if you think about um, the age of majority, adulthood, 18, emancipation, that is a period of time, age, where an individual can uh, look at the, after themselves. So the children released from obedience owe to the father and the father released from the care he owes to his children return equally to independence. And Rosu says that any, um, any subsequent uh, relations from there are only bound together uh, by convention, even though you know parents will still tell us, well, because I said so. Um, so how do we justify the existence of the state? Again, staying with Rosu, um, only if we think about the absence of the state can we think of the chaos that would be. Um, now, again, this is a, the whole controversial point we were making, including how society existed without the state. Can we um, dream up of the conditions that would exist then? Um, and so the existence of the state of nature creates conditions to abolish it by forming the state. Um, and so it is sufficient and necessary for a state to exist because the absence of a state would bring about the chaos of the Hobbesian state of nature. Um, and so J.S. Mills also uh, chimes in and says, a life without restraint on the behavior of others has no little worth. And as you might remember, um, because this then allows people to use that which they think justifies the existence up to and including um, using other people's resources and bodies as um, Hobbes argued. And so this is also the, the question of what else is 
what else would replace the state? Now, we talked about anarchism and whether that is a sort of order by itself, but the question of then how anarchism compels people to, um, to behave according to the agreed upon norms. Now, so this, this, the assumption is that there's nothing better than the state, even though that by itself, in my view, does not justify the state. There is order that can be put together without um, creating the state, so um, civilized societies. But is that a different name or a different perception for the state? Now, my thoughts on this, yes. Um, so we, we are looking perhaps maybe rather than focus on the state, we, we should think of order um, and what that um, means. So, you know, then thinking about the state, the moral duty to be the state and, um, you know, the loss of legitimacy if a state is unable to function. We, this is actually an important point because we've seen um, states lose legitimacy states like Somalia at some point, Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, and so the state can lose legitimacy. Um, if you look at the, uh, the protests going on, on in Iran, there are valid questions of whether the Iranian state has lost legitimacy and therefore ought to be maybe rethought. Now, if we go back to Locke, we, we remember that people are naturally free, equal and independent. They are not under political authority. And so the control of people um, is, and, and I have hammered this point home again and again, nobody asks you whether you want to be governed by the American state. It is assumed that you're born here and you consent to being here. Uh, but power relations are artificial, they are created, they are constructed. And if you think about the relations between people and the state or the rulers, you see all kinds of differences. So for example, the American constitution begins with the, you know, the, the ideas of, or expresses ideas of we the people. Um, but if you go to other Western um, democracies that are also sometimes constitutional monarchies, those citizens or yeah, the citizens are subjects of the king. And so you see the artificial construction of the power relationship. Um, so the, the idea Locke advances is that for you to come under somebody's uh, rule, that is voluntary. Now, I am sure we would probably take objection to that and find many ways of doing so. Um, nobody really is a terrible thing to say, but nobody really volunteers to be born. Uh, nobody really asks you what kind of government you want to be. What if we wanted a dictator um, in the US, but see already some power structures have been, have been determined, and so you can only work within those power structures. I don't think anyone in England could go, I mean, I'm sure they can, and say, well, let's abolish the, the, the monarchy. I don't, now, if you did find maybe enough people to say, let's abolish the monarchy, and then that becomes a new rule. Uh, but you do see that, that um, power relations are constructed, but also coming under someone's rule is voluntary, even though we don't really ask people if they want to be ruled or um, if they're going to support what that country stands for, unless you're taking the oath of. Um, but also, um, there is a, a phenomenon that um, you may be slightly familiar with, the idea of statelessness. Um, there are about six, 10 to 64 million stateless persons. Um, now, they naturally, you cannot lose your, um, states are not allowed to strip you of your citizenship. So you can't, states cannot strip you of your citizenship. Now, if you acquire different citizenship, that can be revoked. Um, so you may um, be familiar with the case of uh, Honda Mut than I think, um, who became an ISIS bride, and then she lost her citizenship. 
Um, now, if you acquire citizenships, there are conditions under which you it can be stripped of you. But um, even if one commits the worst crimes against a state, so for example, treason, states will not um, will not revoke your citizenship and make you stateless. Are there states that cease to exist or people who cease to believe in the authority of the state as it was constructed? Absolutely. Um, but so the, there's this notion um, by Locke that the sovereign has no authority over you unless you consent, except we find that in most cases, nobody asks you to consent. So how do you consent? Um, and so the, the idea of the state is then cast as individual consent to a social contract, um, a social contract that, that suggests how you, the, the state will be governed. Um, now, there, there is, of course, other, um, you know, there, there's other perceptions about the relationship between the state, individuals, um, happiness and those kinds of things, including Bentham's utilitarian theory, that happiness is more important um, than, um, than, than perhaps, you know, autonomy. Now, if you think of um, the Declaration of Independence. I think this is, uh, yeah, maybe the Declaration of Independence. Um, over when the ties that bind people to their sovereign, um, and the the important things that the founders thought, um, and I, I may get this right, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, now. Again, look at the language. It's not happiness because I don't think any state can guarantee you happiness. Some people are just unhappy, whatever you do. But um, the pursuit, the happiness, it seems to Bentham is, is more, is a higher goal to aspire to. I don't know if he knows those um, people who are always unhappy and dissatisfied. Uh, but so the question then is it, autonomy or happiness. Um, the existence of the state then under this uh, assumption is that it should maximize um, the total sum of societal happiness or perhaps well-being or perhaps security. I think this can be challenged in many different ways. Um, and so from Bentham's perspective, a state is uh, justified if it produces more happiness than any alternatives. So some states will produce harmony, social harmony. Um, and again, you know, how do you measure happiness? This uh, is actually an index that is um, known as the Happy Planet Index. Um, it doesn't really necessarily measure happiness um, as we think of it. Um, indeed, it actually measures other things like uh, carbon footprint um, and so on. Uh, can we ask people if they are just happy and then um, assume that is the level of happiness that is produced by, um, by say, the um, membership of a country of membership of people to a country. Perhaps that's the way of uh, maybe thinking about this. Um, now I wanted to bring up the um, Happy Planet Index for just a moment. Um, there is um, this Happy Planet Index uh, and I'm trying to get this visualized, so I'm going to exit out of this for a moment, if I can. And I'm going to share screen. Can I share screen? Yes, share application on screen. Um, how happy is your country? Uh, 
no, this is not. Mm. Yes, I know. Okay, so maybe it's not going to allow us to see um, the Happy Planet Index, which is a shame. Um, but um, let's return to um, our previous discussion on um, whether happiness is the, the most important thing. Um, and, and so according to Bentham's perspective, whether or not we consent to the state is irrelevant. Um, what is more important is to, is whether the state makes us happy, more happy than sad. Um, now, of course, you can then dig into that and, and think of issues such as how exactly does it make people happy or how does it make them sad? Um, and this might be by improving their welfare, by building roads, by building. So again, you can't, it's not just a question of are you happy or are you not? But uh, according to the current measures of uh, the Happiness Planet Index, it would seem um, to us that the happiness does not even um, correlate with well-being. And so what does that then say to us? And so we run into those kinds of issues that we're not going to focus on here, including, for example, the question of consent theory versus utilitarian theory um, and those kinds of things. So when we think about the state, what is the function versus the type? Um, there are very many different types of states. So for example, you have liberal states, electoral democracies. Um, an electoral democracy is, a, is usually a, demo, a country that maybe looks like a democracy and has elections. Um, I would think of Brazil. Um, you can have um, regime types such as uh, dictatorships. They are benign dictatorships and they are tyrannical dictatorships. I would maybe put Saudi Arabia in the category of um, tyrannical dictatorships, maybe North Korea. Now, there are benign dictatorships and um, most um, agree that uh, Singapore when it split from Malaysia was an example of a benign dictatorship. Um, these states that are governed by party membership, including, for example, the Communist Party of China, where the, the party is the most important thing. They are monarchies, they are free market democracies, collectivist, socialist, theocratic, including, uh, for example, Iran, which is a theocracy, Saudi Arabia. Um, then you have the other crises. So, well, one might say crises. Uh, but so theocracies or oligarchies or kleptocracies, this literally about 500 different types of um, governments, which is maybe too many because it's 193 countries in the world today. Um, and so even the definition of a state begins to, and I know we defined a state before when we talked about it having, you know, people, it's, you know, it's a political entity, it has borders, it has recognition, it has people who live there, it has um, the people they are engaged in, mostly legitimate economic activity and so on. Um, so the, the definition of the state becomes um, quite challenging because then, you know, there's also the nation, which some nations are states like um, Finland, Japan, uh, Eswatini. Um, and so especially these nation states will combine 
um, the nation which is cultural, ethnic, linguistic with a state which is recognized internationally, um, but also you have uh, different states with the, I mean, nations within states, for example, the uh, Indian nations in the US, um, which apparently recently the governor of Virginia wanted to be called the first immigrants. Um, yeah, rewriting history. That's not a criticism, that's reporting. So, but we also think about the those nations that are within, um, within states that express separatist sentiments. So for example, the Basque in, uh, in Catalonia, in Spain, or the Kurds. Um, so these are, these become very contending um, uh, issues. And so if we think about um, the, mod, the, the conceptualization of states, how do we think of the state, i.e. the appearance? So the sovereign power state, um, and so, for example, the European nations, the commercial state, which is based on the capitalist mode of production. And so everything is theoretically used to support the capitalist mode of production. The legal constitutional state that uh, thinks about the uh, individual liberties and the democratic nation state. Um, and so this, we will find that there's many different um, conceptualizations of the state which we shall um, think about some more in the next uh, um, in the next uh, couple of 